first part of this series, we went through the steps to create a 2x4 and then worked on multiplying and manipulating a single 2x4 into this square frame structure without a whole lot of difficulty. And that's what I'm hoping to convey with this series is an overview of how to quickly model fairly realistic looking structures for, for planning your projects. So in this segment, I wanna go through and show how to, starting with the two by four group that we made in the first, I wanna show how to expand that out and very simple to other nominal framing member sizes. So I'm gonna shut the shadows off to keep things moving quickly. And then I'm gonna go into this group of plates and pick one of them. Control C will copy that and then edit, paste in place. Take the rotate tool, bond to this little two by four here. So we've rotated that copy down. And this is a two by four group. So we don't have to worry about it affecting anything else in the model. And to make an eight foot two by four into an eight foot two by six, it's very simple. Click into this group. Pull one side down to enter. There we have an eight foot two by six. And this is a little bit um, more of an exercise and not necessarily how you would actually model these things. But um, because we went to the trouble of creating grain pattern using a projected texture in the beginning on that two by four, we can just keep working with that and make any size or length lumber that we're looking for. We can, by using the push-pull tool, it pulls the end straight out. And just, there's, a, there's a board stretcher if you ever saw one. It's a 10 foot two by six. Another way you can do these is by selecting the geometry and then using the move tool, but you can see it. It'll pull that end in any direction and start making um, unusable pieces of lumber. If you decide to move geometry, rather than trying to grab this and move it in a straight line, which you can do as long as you follow the axis that you're pulling in, another way to do that is to grab a straight edge on another board. Sometimes it's, uh, it's easier to follow a different straight edge that's going the direction you want to go. But uh, that's just a little more information on that aspect of it. If we want to make this into, if we want to take that and um, make this into a two by anything else. I'm going to put a dimension on the outside of this, which is five and a half or two by six. And if we go into the group, we pull this down, <clears throat> you can see that dimension changes. So if you're looking for a, a two by 10, which is nine and a quarter, um, there I moved it that much, and then I can move it again and tell it three slash one six and end up at nine and a quarter. That's all simple enough to do. I can copy these two things over here. I'm trying to get it to stay in the red. There it goes. Jump in here, pull us down a couple more inches and make it a two by 12. And we can make it 96, we can make a two by 12 foot. 16 footer so framing lumber is very easy to make um, if we wanted to make a, a 1 by 10 piece of cedar for instance maybe for a trim board or a piece of fascia I'm just copying the, the 2 by go in here and then we can just shrink the thickness of it down by 0.75 and uh, I guess we could go in and color that with something else. Let's see. I'm probably not going to have bamboo or cherry, but let's just take cherry and make that. Make that our default cedar board by editing out this and just brown it up a little bit. Let's see. Brown this thing up a little and make it look like cedar. So um, you can see if you we're trying to create one by material, every, any length or width. You can just start with a 
Start with what you have and work from there. You might want to develop this with a projected texture. Let's do that real quick just because we can. So I'm going to go in here, select the face, rotate, uh, let's see, select the face and move and copy. Let's just move one of these over. Move the face over. Yeah, it's already doing weird things. Look at the grain change direction for some reason. And then uh, so that's stuck to the board. I didn't want that either. So let's go move and control to move a copy of this in the that direction. Click in here and go texture position. I don't know why this is coming out 90 degrees to itself, but we're just going to go and fix it. It's going to be stubborn. There we go. And then take this and rotate it. and make that projected. Triple click this. Go select eyedropper this, this. And now it now it projects the grain through the end and so um, I guess I got a little carried away with that train of thought but um, same principle goes if, if you were making dimension lumber for trim work you can take this same piece now that it's created and you can make it any width, uh, any length just by moving these things around. The board stretcher is a wonderful thing. I wish I could do that on the job, but I can't. Anyways, uh, with that little instruction there, um, gives you an idea how quickly you can create these different pieces of lumber. And I haven't, I haven't drawn anything other than that very first two by four. Everything else is just copied and modified, which is one of the great aspects of SketchUp. We'll move on to manipulating some of this dimensional lumber and extend this framing model out a little bit uh, to give an idea about how to work with some of those things here in a minute. Now that you have an idea of how simple it is to draw 2x4s, 2x8s, various framing, lumber, etc., let's put some of that to work here and build with some bites and create a floor joist system with some of this lumber. I'll shut these shadows off again and let's see. We don't need it, but let's go ahead and make this joist system out of the 2x10 we created. I'm just going to move these other boards out of the way in case I feel like using those later. Don't need to dimension for now. So let's move this right over here. And then just for grins, I'm going to take one of these and move this into the same place and then I'm going to move it down. Oh, a foot should do, just like that. All right, this one's longer than I want it, so I'm going to shrink this down right here. Oops, not make it thinner. Let's want to make it shorter, this long. So those two are the same length. We have them lined up, and that'll show you. That way I can show how to do this other little framing thing. If you found yourself in a modeling situation like this, so let's move these and copy them. Let's put those down there. They're still selected so I'm going to rotate those. Rotate and copy with the controls. So let's go like this. 90 degrees. They're both too short now for joists so let's fix that. Let's just pull this over here and then we can infer on this edge of the joist rather than typing anything in. And then this one, because the board stretcher remembers the last thing you did, I'm just double clicking, it creates those the same. If this was a floor joist system, which we're sort of pretending it is, we'd line these joists up underneath the studs. So I'm just gonna slide this. You can see it moving in the green direction, which is right along that line. If I hold down the shift key and then index to this face of the two by four, it lines those up. I could have done that by typing in 16 inches too, but that's the way I did it. So I'm going to hit enter and then 
10 X enter and 10 is too many. I want to get rid of four of those. So I'm just going to go before touching anything else. I'm just going to hit six X enter and that was wrong too. So let's go to seven X enter and then move these two back into position where we want them. And you can see there how quick that is to um, create all that framing from basically starting with a two by four. So I'm carefully dragging a box around these and I make those a group just because I want to move them up to the top as if there was a second floor on this, which is kind of silly. Two story phone booth and all. And then let's see if we can select these joists and I can pivot the model around and use the dotted line approach to grab all those floor joists and make those a group as well because we're going to need to put a, a layer of plywood in here for the floor which will come in another episode. Oops, I don't want 74, I want 0.75. Enter. So I'm hoping that um, communicating the idea of modeling these, all these things versus drawing them. And drawing is kind of a one line at a time process where modeling is creating geometry and then manipulating it quickly and efficiently to save time. And then you can spend time on other aspects of your project planning. So there you have it. In the next video in this series, I'm going to cover how to draw sheet goods and work with those. We'll just add those to this box model here and uh, take that as the next step. Thanks for watching.